the big one after. These are October. Mm -hmm. Anyone like an agenda? I forgot. I forgot. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Hi, Audra. Hi, Audra. Yeah, so we are going to be starting just a couple of minutes late today because we didn't quite have the meeting uh, the 15 minutes beforehand. Hope to get this nope. room on an off day. Yes. Okay. The meeting is recording. Yes. Oh. Come on. Okay. So, can you ask yeah. the chair? We are ready. We are ready. We are ready. Let's do it. Hey. All right. Can we start off by seeing if they can hear? Can you guys all hear? Can we get a thumbs yes. up? Yes. yes, I can hear. Got yes, both. I can hear. Okay. We've got both Claire's. We've got Audra. And we have a lot of the. We have and a lot of the BIE people. Yes. Great. Awesome. Thank you all for that. Uh, okay. Well, it is 4.05. And I'd like to call the November uh, Beautification and Public Art Commission meeting to order. Uh, roll call. J. Michael Cruz, Vice Chair. Present. Claire Edelman Heat. Present. Claire Johnson. Present. Uh, myself, Carla McCord, Chair, present. Matt McGrath. Present. Michael Rulon. Present. And Audrey Travelby. Present. Oh. Okay, moving on to upcoming events. This is your reminder to please look at Flagstaff 365 for upcoming events, music, culture, arts, and sciences. Uh, we have as item number two, the Aspen niche ribbon cutting, save the dates for December 10th at 10.30 a.m. And calendar invites have already been sent to the commission. And then uh, item D, do we have any public participation today? Uh, nobody gave us notice by three o'clock today. Okay, great. And then um, moving on to item E, approval of minutes. Um, can I get a motion to approve the minutes or? So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor, aye. 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 And then moving on to item F, announcements. Uh, staff? Actually, Dave, this is you. I put you down. I, uh, I'm sorry to surprise you. But uh, <laughs> the bed, board, and beverage tax election result. What is it, Dave? Um, <laughs> maybe a surprise, but maybe not that, yes, the BBB tax was renewed. So that is very exciting for uh, both beautification and the public art programs. So congratulations to everybody. Um, who was an advocate, of course, as staff, we were not advocating, but we tried to do a heck of a lot of educating and outreach. We appreciate everybody's efforts to uh, communicate to the public the benefit of this. And I think it actually demonstrates the um, the awesomeness of the commission, if I'm not sounding too, like, uh, complimentary. Um, <laughs> no, I'll just roll with it. That, uh, well, no, I, 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 yeah, fair point. I do feel like the, the work that's been getting done both um, with the commission's leadership and by staff is a part of why the public felt like it was worth renewing again. And I know we are two out of the five programs that received it, but I think a very visible part. And it was great to see the public overwhelmingly approve. Plus, it means that we get a lot less stressed out over the next, you know, you're 2032, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. Yes. Yep. So it's a lot of time to deliver some really incredible projects. Yeah. So it's fantastic. Uh, moving on to item two. Vice Chair, did you have any announced? I just not. And I do not either. So, and then item three, do other commissioners have announcements? Anybody online? Claire's? Audra? Nothing for me. Great, thank you. And then our council liaison, Miranda, did you have any announcements? She emailed me back, but she had not. Oh, okay, fantastic. I mean, that would be another person to congratulate yeah, as well. Yes. yes. Congratulations yeah. on your reelection, council member. And then item G, action items. 
Uh, so beautification and action grants applicant presentations, Corey. Yeah, so we'll get started first with um, Laramie from Dark Sky Brewing. She's going to present her BIA grant for five minutes. Laramie, if you want to have a seat over there at the presenter's chair, um, I'm going to get my timer going and we will call time after those five minutes and the um, council will have three minutes to ask you some questions. Perfect. All right, let's go. So I went old school and brought in paper. Okay. You guys look at. So I'll start with just a little bit about uh, me and uh, my husband both started Dark Sky Brewing Company in 2014. So almost 10 years we've been around. Uh, we started expanding into our beer garden location in 2021, um, which is kind of where we kind of hold on all of our community events and um, partnerships. Um, so uh, having that space has really sort of created more fun and more excitement and more outdoor activity. Um, but we started our nonprofit in 2022, and this is kind of where that project is kind of going. Uh, we're thinking about updating our mural at Beaver Street and then allowing the community to come in and paint a bunch of barrel ends those could be under 21, over 21 groups. Um, we're just going to kind of place it out into the community. There's over 20 different barrel ends, all spaced out across our 12,000 square feet of property. So we feel like we can really sort of get a lot of different community partners involved in that. Um, not advertising for anybody, but um, just more artwork, where we have a space for artwork. Um, that's kind of our thought process and our plan on that. Uh, we did sort of start this mural already, just knowing that we wanted to get it done before the winter. Um, you know, winter got crazy, which it did come a little early this year, which was nice. Uh, but we do plan to expand this mural so that it's 100% of our, our wall space, as opposed to just about 25% that it is now. So it's kind of a project across our whole entire space. It's not just one mural, it's a bunch of little murals. But I'd be happy to open it up to the questions. I have a, just a procedural question, legal question, go ahead, quick, which is um, Are we able to fund a project that's already been started? It is in the guidelines that it is recommended that you don't, but it is not a rule. So it's a, it's, it, you know, so that that's what the guidelines say. Okay. So, okay. Not, sure. It's a not recommended, but not a prohibition. I wanted to make sure we were right. debating something that was a moot point. <laughs> yeah, none of the barrels have started. Um, it's just this wall mural that's about twenty five percent right now, um, and we're going to expand to about hundred percent over the course of the winter. Am I allowed to share photos, Jen? Yeah. Um. I know you sent some in. Um, I sent them to Corey. Do we have them available really quick? Uh, I I can pull them up, but I didn't incorporate it into any sort of presentation. If you forward me the email, I can share it on the screen. Too. Yeah, um, I did go by because I wanted to see. So I did take some pictures of what the current status of the of the mural is. Yes. Um, I think that's really helpful. It was it was really helpful for me to visualize where all the art's gonna go. Yeah, before um, I talked about how it had to be started, and as it it was kind of a thing that I didn't see in the guidelines that it couldn't get started. So we huh, we went ahead and did it just while the weather was weather was good. Um, I'm in construction. I understand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, cool. That would be awesome. I think I think though it's really nice because the photographs do provide a little bit of context that maybe the drawings don't. So we can see where that stuff really stands. Thank you. Um, Laramie, how important is it for you to have the DSB on the barrels? Because it's not. I, it's not. And I, I mentioned that to Corey that we don't have to have any branding whatsoever. Um, that was just more of a way just to kind of show what we could do with them. And again, it's going to be open to a bunch of different community um, partners. 
not dark sky people. So it was just more of like a a way to sort of show it without, you know, leading people into a different genre. What it is. So you would know, though, not have a problem if it was all pictorial and, and no kind of signage whatsoever. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, and I sent that in my email back to Corey as well. I don't mind at all. Okay. okay. It's good to know. Yeah. We don't need any branding. Corey, did you invite that? That's what the artists can yeah. yeah. do their own design. That's, that's, that's five minutes. minutes. So just now we have three so minutes of ongoing yeah. questions. So we have um, almost 30 or 40 barrels across the whole property. So our goal is to open it up to any sort of public park. For art. And so then you guys would be paying the individual artists? Correct. Yeah. Through our nonprofit. Okay, so, and um, would you be open to showing those images? Um, are you going to ask for proposals from those other? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. And would you um, be open then to sharing those images uh, with BPAD for hire? Of course. So these are not final images. These are not final images. Okay. These are just meant to be a representation of what what could be. Okay. And that's to the barrows versus the uh, mural. Correct. Okay. Yeah, the mural we have a real guideline to go through. Um, but we can change whatever we need to change on that as well. But we did start with the flowers and the hops, and um, it's basically like twenty five percent of what's down below all the windows above it. Are you guys comfortable with, if I can ask a question, um, having some restrictions on the, the content in terms of the things that we're not allowed to fund, basically? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think absolutely. the guidelines would actually really help us present it out to the community better. Yeah. And Elise, do my sons too, I'll just talk to you directly. Yeah, again, Elisa, period, Hansen at flagstaffaz.gov. Um, if you want, we can also look at that when it's time for uh, the actual voting. Okay, I can't get it up. It's it's great. I apologize that that wasn't that good. It's a long one. Yeah, I think I'm going to show the picture what's already done too, but if that helps. I know it's kind of also hard because we have people online and so they're not able to see your images. So some of our Commissioners are um, available, but I believe all these images came from the application, correct? Correct. We showed here today. Yep, there's nothing new. Okay, so that's our time. Do we want to extend or move on to the next? Do you guys think do you guys need more time? No? Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll try to get those images up when we're doing the voting. Okay. Great, okay. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, I like this. Okay, now we have Jenna with the CSA local market. Go ahead and start. Hello everyone, my name is Jenna Walzak and I am the retail manager at Flagstaff CSA local market. Um, CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture. And the idea is that um, the community is supporting local and regional farmers by pre-ordering their produce every week. It's from the start by saying thank you so much for inviting me to be here today. I'm really excited. Um, and I said that about our project, which is titled Local Food and Agriculture in Bloom at Flagstaff CSA and Local Market. So just starting off with a little bit about us, who we are at Flagstaff CSA. So as I mentioned, my name is Jenna. I'm the retail manager. I work on day-to-day -day operations at the shop. Um, Andrea Mackadow is our owner and logistics manager. She works on ordering produce from farms across northern Arizona and the state. I don't know if you can tell from this picture, but we are sisters. Um, <laughs> and then Kaylee Quick um, mentioned you may know already Kaylee is a Flagstaff based artist and muralist um, who has designed and installed um, murals both across Flagstaff and the Southwest New York. Uh, Southwest um, United States. Um, in addition to those of us I've already mentioned, we have four staff members, 132 CSA members, and 125 customers who shop in the store every week, including customers who use SNAP and Double Up Food Bucks. Uh, Double Up Food Bucks is a program where for every 
um, dollar a customer spends on Arizona grown or produced food items using um, SNAP EBT, they earn an equivalent credit that they can use on Arizona grown produce. Um, and finally, we have a partnership with a local nonprofit, Flagstaff Community Fridges, to distribute uh, food at low to no cost. So, four main goals at Flagstaff CSA. Our first is to get fresh local food out to the Flagstaff community. We want to make this food accessible to everyone. We want to support Northern Arizona farmers and food producers. And finally, we're passionate about building a sense of community around local and seasonal food. I'm sorry. Uh, so Flagstaff CSA has been um, around since 2002. Um, and it started as a project at NAU and moved into its current location on Cottage Avenue in 2009. Um, Andrea and I have been in ownership and leadership positions since January of 2024, so about a year now. Um, and when we started in those positions, the first thing that we did was renovate the inside of the shop. So in these photos, you can see what the shop looks like now. We painted the walls, um, installed new flooring, got new shelving, new refrigerators, and a new freezer. Um, and much of these interior renovations were funded by successful grant projects. All right, so now that we have uh, mostly wrapped up the interior renovations, um, we're starting to work on uh, some projects on the outside of the shop. So the first thing is installing a new front door. We've been approved to do that, and it'll hopefully be uh, installed within the next month. And we are also working on the front garden and the landscaping. So we removed a large shrub that was um, unfortunately blocking the pathway to the front door. Um, we are planting some flower bulbs that will bloom in the spring and we'll have additional kind of landscaping upgrades to come. We have cherry tree that everyone on the street and on the block looks as well and blooms, or sorry, for end of June to early July. And finally, you can see here um, the location of the proposed project. So the wall is currently um, blank and you can also see it, community members can see it um, as they're traveling up and down Beaver Street. And last but certainly not least, here is the draft of the mural that Kaylee Cook has designed. Um, the theme is local food and agriculture in bloom. Um, so there are summer squash, eggplant, and dill flowers so far, as long as the sort of, as well as the sort of um, really organic, almost water-like um, blue design moving through the middle. Um, and importantly, the landlords um, and the property managers are aware of this project, and they have said that they will give their final approval in writing of the, the final version of this. So I just wanted to say that um, we really want to make the space um, a place for the community, um, somewhere that's unique to Flagstaff and somewhere that we can all be proud of. Um, and thank you again for the opportunity to be here today. I'm really excited about this project and I hope that you all do. I have a question about that last thing you said where um, you said the landlord is going to give approval for the final design. So is this not the final design? No, Kaylee um, drafted this and she will add some additional elements to the foreground, she said, um, and uh, make any final edits. Um, and then the landlord has said that they can give, right now they're willing to write like a conditional letter. It's just saying that they'll give approval for the final version, but they really want to see and approve the final version of it. Would it be a problem for us to see the final version? Oh, no. Yeah, we'd love to share that with you. Yeah. Other questions? Anybody online have questions? Nothing for me. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. So next, Jill, if you're ready. If Jill Sands, Jill, you have five minutes to give your presentation. At the one minute mark, I'm just going to raise this blue flag. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> well, thank you, everybody. My name is Jill Sands. Thank you for this opportunity. I am proposing a mural in Sunnyside. 
at 2214 Northwest Street. This is a converted uh, if you want to, I can just scroll for you, please. Um, this is a converted gas station on the corner of 6th Street and West. It is now owned by Laura Chamberlain, who is here today, um, who owns Culinary Concept Southwest. So I believe this would be kind of first of its kind, taking an old gas station and creating some artwork and making it pop. Taking a place that once was hazardous, now is the home of food. I love this idea of shifting that dynamic. So, um, the neighborhood is across the street from a preschool. It's from Coconino High School in Killip Elementary, across the street from Skate Park, Basin. I believe it's about community garden is in the area as well. So this is a very vibrant corner um, with very youthful life energy. Proposed design is painting the awning, the columns and the islands this is where all the petroleum pumps used to exist. So really giving a space that pops, bringing in elements that are uh, more geometric, mandolic, but still representing plants, flowers, and such. And so you can see the detailed um, proposed ideas and then the existing property as it is right now. So a little bit darker and bringing these colors into the space will really make it pop and come alive. And then a little about me. Um, I'm a local artist, gallerist, art educator here in Flagstaff. I've been here for 30 years. I own the Heartbox Gallery in downtown Flagstaff. I am a hub for local art here in this community. I paint a temporary and permanent murals for display in addition to receiving a beautification grant through uh, Bridget Morrison, which is a utility cabinet on the corner of Beaver and Dale. My work is inspired by the natural world. I collect plants and forage and make inks and paint for them. So my work is based in sustainability. Or you can see some examples of the work I have created um, on the left are the vinyl wraps on Beaver and Dale. A mural I did at the yoga experience when they were there. And then the heart is a panel outside Aspen Alley on the Switzer building. And then a little bit about Culinary Concept Southwest. Um, Laura Chamberlain being the owner, she grew up with her grandmother and mother being in the arts. She learned at an early age that uh, painting is more than just a, or art is more than just a painting on a wall. It's a reflection of someone's life and talents. So for her art, it's food. And that allows her to express that way. After purchasing this property, the old gas station, she does, um, many people stop by and share stories about the neighborhood and what that building used to be. So there's already this tie to community existing. And food is community. Um, it's a culinary center that supports the collective engagement with other chefs and farmers. They believe in supporting local and regional farmers with the same values as they do when tending, loving, and supplying delicious, sustainably grown and harvested food. And with the budget, uh, I am requesting the full 7,500 for this project, 3,250 being for my artist fees, base price 1,500, scissor lift, two grand, scaffolding rental 350. Um, Laura has agreed to cover any outlying costs on that. And I would like to open up to reduce my artist fees to a few um, Coconino High School students, as well as NAU, to be a part of this project, to bring that community together, working on some of the lower lying areas like the island and the lower parts of the colony. And it's no secret to you all what the benefits of art in our community is, but can make spaces feel safer, adding color and vibrancy to a neighborhood, public engagement, and it's art inspired a little bit. So thank you so much for your time. I have a couple questions. Um, how is that space going to be used? It looks like it's, yeah. like, I'm familiar with the space. I've, I've had breakfast there. <laughs> um, 
but uh, like, what is the plan for using that space? Um, can Laura speak to this? Yeah, or? yeah I can answer. Yes. Um, so I bought the property in 2021, and I've been catering and cooking at Flagstaff 2004. Um, Madras used to be in the building. They are no longer there, unfortunately, and also fortunately, because they have a bigger space now. Uh, so we offer weekly meals. So people come actually right now stopping by to pick up their, their food. Um, we do catering. We do pop-up dinners. Um, just recently, we did a, a block party, and Food Link was there, and Jill and Meg runs Flagstaff Mountain Town Market was there. So we'd love to do more community-based events. Yeah. So the space right now is just a kitchen, or is there a place to eat there? Do you? There is no okay. public space. Um, for eating outside. Um, I've been getting temporary use permits to do the pop-up dinners. Um, and if I can get a conditional use permit for next year, then hopefully we can entertain having more options for people to spend time at the, the property. And that's the longtime goal. I've been working with the city to try to make that happen. Um, the winter when we're slower, I'm gonna work on getting that, that conditional use permit. It's a good corner to activate. Yeah, I agree. Find a way to activate it. Yeah, and we've put in lots of planters, so we're growing food, and just trying to make it more vibrant and pretty and attractive for the neighborhood. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? I have a question. I have some questions. So the um, the art's going to be on the awnings, and then on the um, posts, I guess, that hold up the roof where someone would drive in and get gas and then the, the islands are cement or what's okay so They're concrete yeah. yeah concrete okay thank you thank you so okay so next we have joel if you're ready to present okay. joel we'll have you sit up front Time, I guess. Yes, you have five minutes. When you have one minute remaining, I'm going to raise this flag just to signal you. Right. And uh, yeah, okay. Um, it looks like the slides are work. Okay, so we're back at the Cosmo Gray Tunnel. This is where I've done the um, the paintings before on the exit wings for the main tunnel. And as you can see from this first slide, one of the glaring things is like, oh, what's going to happen on the other side? That's been pretty much everyone's question is that wing. And there's other things that I want to do, which we'll see, but that wing is kind of the focus of this pitch. So if you can move on from there, um, that's just it again. That's that wing. We can move forward. So the main idea was the dendroglyphs. This was something I wanted to include at. when researching the Basque history having to do with the shepherd side of the first round of painting down there. Um, this really fascinated me and I wanted to put it into the original artwork, but there wasn't really space for it and felt sort of shoehorned in and not focused on. And then, so it didn't go in at all. And then someone, I think it was, I don't remember exactly who, but someone was like, oh, you should do something about the dendroglyphs on the other side. It's like, that's perfect. That's what I want to do. So these are the dendroglyphs. For anyone who doesn't know, those are a few examples of their carvings on aspen trees. That was something that the Basques did when they were out there by themselves. And in doing more reading about this, um, we can move forward. The uh, There's kind of major categories of the dendroglyph signatures, obviously, which I wrote there, who am I? Because these are the major questions, right? When you're out there by yourself and you're wanting to leave something for the next person coming by, which is what the mural would also be doing. So the who am I, these are their names. Um, the next slide is uh, portraiture. That was an, uh, another main category of things you'll find. And I don't have a slide with vast art. And I wish I did because these look somewhat, you know, rudimentary and cartoony, but they're actually, you know, they were, it was in the Picasso era, they were emulating art that looked like that, full color art that looked like that. So these people were actually good artists. They were trying to make one like that. Um, the next slide, so what am I? Then surroundings, you know, uh, observations, icons, um, that sheep head. I really like how simple that is and effective. Uh, and then the last slide, the next slide is poetry. 
Um, I, I don't have written down the translations of all these, and these are in different languages. That main one is uh, Viva Me, which is just Long Live Me, which I really thought was funny. And um, uh, one was about um, solidarity and loneliness, and another one was about um, how life is uh, more valuable than money. And um, moving on, the next one is home, you know, where they're headed, what they're dreaming of. So it's, you know, so those are the, 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 the key things. So the next slide is what you see. And that's how I pitched it before. And um, there's some, there's different ways I've gone about doing this. I originally had something much more graphical. And then when I put gender glyphs in, it looked like graffiti on a painting because they are graffiti, right? So I went with something much more realistic um, and you know, hoping it would capture it. It's a little, you know, hard to see them, right? Which in real life, they'll be easier to see. And um, we can just keep skipping forward because I've added some things that I think help the piece. Oh, so, so then talking about the other things I want to do, the archways connecting the two pieces. So there'd be some signage there. And then moving forward, the other wing is, um, this is just a nice hillside that complements the, uh, uh, sort of becomes the other half of the cosmic ray one, and moving forward, the uh, also doing the archway there, and uh, skipping ahead, we'll just keep going, skip. And, this is the last. Slide. Oh, that's the last slide. So I did have um, some updates to the design that uh, added some things for me um, that I was missing. So. One of the main things was I put this stone boy in the middle because it really felt like it needed a subject around which these dendroglyphs can kind of dance. And that was one of the other things that they would do is build, you know, these stone uh, stone boys or Karens, I think they're called. So I've added that to the middle and I've got a couple of different versions of different trains of thought on how to accomplish the dendroglyphs themselves. This one, I really went all out. I pretended, you know, what if someone tried to tell the, the entire Basque history with these, so, um, and these are all modeled after their art. Um, not necessarily dendroglyphs, but like I said, the dendroglyphs was modeling after their mm -hmm. contemporary art of the time. And that is that. All right, what's that ask a question? Does anybody have questions? So just to clarify, this ask is just for that one wing with the trees. No. No, this would be the, the the two wings and the overhangs. Okay. Okay. And the art. Uh, yeah. So the the yeah the main focus is the dendroglyph side, but I wanted to to, to finish off right. both sides. Yeah, with connecting signage in between yeah. both of them, and we have answered that question uh, as far as that that signage would be allowed. Is that it? question um is there any sort of indication in the art or is there a plan for some sort of a i don't know descriptive or narrative piece that helps people understand that, that we're not encouraging them to go carve up aspen trees and draw yeah. <laughs> pretty houses and stuff because because uh, on the one hand i get the historical and cultural yeah. relevance it's amazing um but it almost feels like without that context without somebody there to explain it we're sort of encouraging folks to go create their their own and i i don't have a precise answer to that other than it's um you know it's it's the line i'm skating in that we're it's a mural about graffiti which is uh, i just understand that's a you know weird fence and the the thing about these trees you know they only live about um 100 150 years so a lot of these are basically disappearing so um, that doesn't exactly answer that question, except that I know what you're saying, and I don't. I don't exactly know how to. And maybe there's a way to to do it. I'm not not all on you. I just I feel like helping explain what you just said. That we're, in some ways we're cataloging the history, but not telling people to go start their own. I mean, I don't know how we get there. I just want to throw it on the yeah. table. Yeah. Um, we had enough. 
people going through the tunnel, but the volume of people that saw the mural, saw the graffiti on the trees, and then decided, like we're eliminating them at each level, you know, and then decided to go execute their own graffiti on the trees. I feel like, I feel like it would be a pretty small count, but, um, and I don't know if, I guess, I guess I'm not sure if it's a huge risk. Um, I, I thought about what you were thinking earlier too, but um, I don't know if it's a giant risk. Does Audrey have a question? Uh, Audrey, did you have a question? I do. Um, you talked a lot about the history of the Basque people and how that informs your design. And I think that that is such an important piece of experiencing this particular piece of art. Have you thought about a way to incorporate the message of that history? I'm not sure how, like, maybe there's a QR code they could scan that would bring up on their phone, like, you know, all of the stuff that you described. Or it just adds such a meaningful layer to the art. I'm just wondering if you thought about that. If, if we want to have more time. We yeah, need we need to vote for more time. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, oh, it's okay. Uh, it's not on you. Uh, do we want to vote for more time? Um, how much time do you think we need? A minute? Two minutes? Let's vote for two minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 So let's continue. Thank you. The, um, that was also a question with the first chapter, and it would be nice there, you know, we've had those plaques installed, and so a QR code would be a nice addition at some point somewhere. If um, it, originally in the plaques, there was a place where it might have gone, and then they got nixed, so it's not there from chapter one, um, but it, yeah, it certainly could be added. Because you know, even with the the other side, people don't know that's a bass shepherd. It's but we do have the plaque at least explaining that, um, so we know that the history and going over the archway, I would at least I I was playing with the idea of a sign that at least said dendroglyphs, so that people would at least be encouraged to Google that word and I'd be like, oh, that's what these are. Anybody else have any questions? Fantastic. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Hey, so next we have Seneca. Hi. Are you able to squeeze my little presentation I just sent you in or should I use my? Uh, we did not receive it in time to incorporate okay. it. Okay. Um, can I use my computer? That's what I was saying. Annalisa's going to have to address oh, okay. that. I don't have the ports for an oh, book. Okay. Feelings. Nobody has ports for MacBooks anymore. I don't know how to do that. Um, if you don't mind sitting over here, you can use this one. Oh, okay. I don't think it's, I don't mind sitting over here. Things happening. Is it? You know, I've never had two computers going before. Oh. Um, Sorry about this. Hi, I'm early. You you let me in. Um, yeah, so uh, we're not re quite ready for you yet, David. Okay. So Camera for right now. We'll call you. Okay. How oh, is it working? Um, I'm sorry. I don't know why it's not uh, connecting to your computer. Um, and I okay. I don't have your presentation. I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. I is actually, there a way to send the presentation? The email? I, I just emailed it to Corey right before the meeting, so it's just not in time. time. Is there a way that you can? Email it to Annalisa. I mean, I did send it to Annalisa. Um, Sorry about that. It's okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I think 
the, the most recent one you sent me is your presentation? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the one that I've just sent you now, Annalisa. In the last like minute? Yep. It is. I think when everybody's watching, it goes even slower than usual. <laughs> I can also start speaking if that's yeah, good this for is us. Okay. Yes, that is, that's great. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Seneca, and um, I'm excited to meet you all because this is my first time to present with you. And I'm presenting about a project that's a little different than the projects that we've presented so far. Um, and me and some other folks are collaborating to um, make a, a short film about the history of the Whale Foundation. Um, if you all aren't familiar with the Whale Foundation, um, they're a foundation that's been in Flagstaff since 96, and they provide financial um, like advice services, like coaching services and mental health services and some other like health check and health fair things to um, the river guiding community in Grand Canyon based in Flagstaff here. Um, and the folks that are in scroll, yes. The folks that are involved um, are myself, who is the Thalwag, which I'll introduce myself more specifically in a minute. Um, Margot, Elizabeth, and Sandcast Media. Um, all of us are guides in Grand Canyon and have received the services of the Whale Foundation. Um, we find them very important to our community that does not receive um, benefits as seasonal workers. Um, but we also are very inspired by the story itself of this idea um, of mutual aid that was, you know, these dirt bags that had no money and no resources. Um, this is their friend, um, Curtis Whale, in this picture. And he passed, um, he took his own life due to some um, mental health issues. And they decided to make this foundation to support their community, which um, is a story that I think speaks to many people, but is very beautifully located in Flagstaff in a pretty localized community here. Um, so those folks that um, created this foundation are starting to get older, and a lot of people in the Grand Canyon community don't actually know the story or know these people. We feel like it's time to share their story and document it. <clears throat> So um, this is um, the Thalwag, which is the nonprofit that um, I run that will be like um, managing all the administrative parts of this project. Um, we are a artist collective and a printed publication that specializes in folks that live and work in wild landscapes. Um, so we print like 12 to 15 different contributors once a year that are visual artists, poets, creative writers. Um, that all live and work in wild places. Um, we have kind of expanded our programming to do a lot of collaboration work. Um, and that is kind of a way to um, bolster our support of the artists we work with. Like obviously publishing their work is very cool. Um, but we have started um, doing some collaborative work where artists make merch for some different nonprofits. We've um, done some events with Northern Arizona Book Festival, who is our fiscal sponsor, um, and Grand Canyon River Guides at their guide training last year. We did a really cool storytelling event. Um, this is Margot, some of Margot's work. Uh, Margot will be also producing with me, but she will be specifically taking portraits of all of the characters that played a role in this story. Um, we hope that it will be a short film, but we will also be um, printing the um, story in the Thalwag and also in the Boatman's Quarterly Review. So we'll have both like a printed version that's physical and a, a short film. Um, and the film, I wonder if this will work since it's a, no, it won't work. Um, this is a, will be produced by Sandcast Media. And there's some local folks here in Flagstaff that also specialize in like some backcountry media. Um, and yeah, and they, um, both Justin and Harlan, um, grew up here in Flagstaff and the story of the Well Foundation is super dear to them. So um, they're the folks that will be doing the film aspect of our project. 
Um, you all asked us specifically to answer where our film will be shown. Um, as of right now, um, we have um, organized with MOCAF, um, which is a local nonprofit arts venue here in Flagstaff that wants to do an event with us where it will be a free showing of the film and of Margot's portraits of the folks. Um, the Whale Foundation itself wants to do a free event for folks to view the film. And then once the film is actually made, we're really excited to apply for things like um, movies in the square. Um, we have like Grand Canyon Youth wants to do an event with us. Um, so does Grand Canyon River Guides. And obviously that we have to have the film before we ask that. <laughs> um, you've also time. Oh, okay. Here's our budget that you guys asked us about. Well, you know when you get the other funding. Yeah, that, I think that was one of your main questions. Yes. And all of the grants we've applied for are in the same grant cycle. So um, we will probably know in like the next month. Um, we do know we met with um, G. Crowa is an outfitters association that wants to give us most of the funding for our first phase. And um, we met with him and he was very encouraging that we would get the funding from them. He's really excited to fund our project. But we met with the Creative Flag staff last week, and our private donations are all coming in as we speak. Yeah, so it's kind of all happening right now. What is the like time frame for when we would see the yeah. film? Yeah. So this spring, we're planning to have like an event where all these people can come together. Mostly for logistical and financial reasons, you can't. It's very expensive to film interviews from people all over the country. So we're going to invite them all to one of their pieces of property in um, Sedona to do the filming of um, all of the interviewing kind of questions. Um, and that will be in the spring. And that will be a time where we will be applying for the next phase of funding, which you guys can see down here at the bottom there, phase two. So this, the, what we're applying for right now is just to fund phase one, which is the organizing of that event and the like filming and taking of pictures and then all of the editing and post-production stuff will happen hopefully next winter. Is yeah. there any filming happening on the river? No, we wanted it to happen on the river, um, but a lot of folks are too old to kind of make that trip. Yeah. So that's why we chose the location in Sedona that was super comfortable and safe for them to visit. Great. Anybody else have any questions? Anyone online? Yeah, could I just get a clarification? I know that this project also applied for a um, capacity building and innovation grant, and I know that both of these are funded by BBB. Is that OK to have two different grants from BBB funds for one project? I believe that this was discussed internally, and we agreed that you know this project would be allowed to do that. And then moving forward, we're going to think about strategizing how to handle those sorts of situations. And I can explain they're two separate funds, right? Like, so BIA is actually beautification funding, yes. and the Creative Flagstaff funds are arts and science funding. So they're actually two very separate pots of money. There are some interesting uh, discussions because they're both overseen by the BPAC, but um, I think that was the general rationale for you're not using. Beautification to supplement beautification, it's two separate funding pots that both are appropriate in different ways. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there'll probably be some further discussions about whether that's a direction the commission wants to go in the future, but in this case, it felt like it was appropriate. Thank you. Um, we also Three spoke. Oh. Uh, do we have more questions? Do we need to ask for more time? I do not. Can I say one final thing about the funding? I don't know, is that allowed? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So now we're moving online to David Pollitzer from NAU. Hi, David. Hello again. Um, five minutes to present, followed with um, three minutes of questions from our committee. And Annalisa, are you able to give him a one minute um, Absolutely. notification? Thank yes. you. Okay, so ready when you are. Hi, uh, I'm David Pollitzer. Thanks for um, welcoming me to present my my uh, project to you. 
can go ahead to the next slide. So just to give you a little bit of context uh, and project background, um, phase one of the project is already in motion. It's generously supported by uh, the NAU Green Fund. And what phase one entails is an engineering assessment of the space to determine what can be done in terms of additions and modifications. Once we have that report, we'll know how to specify weight loads, materials, uh, placement of different objects, including the public art. And this will inform how we articulate the RFP to the public to um, the RFP to the public. Next. Here's a, a Google version bird's eye view of where where it is. Uh, it's centrally located on NAU's campus. It's outdoors, so it's open 24 seven. Um, however, like most uh, outdoor areas uh, on any use campus. It's monitored for campers and overnighters. Next. Um, the space is shared among three different units in the Performing and Fine Arts building, the Department of Theater, Department of Music, and Department of Art. It's visible from Knowles Drive and walkways adjacent to the Performing and Fine Arts building, Klein Library, uh, one of the bus stops on Knowles and the student union across the street. Next. Here is the space. Um, you can see it's kind of cavernous. <laughs> uh, I call it a patio, but okay. it's not really a patio. Um, it's not really used by anyone or uh, currently. It's just kind of begging to be uh, activated. And so the the red circle is where I envision the public art to be among the rest of the additions and modifications to the space. Next. Here are some examples of the sight lines. I know you are interested in that, um, so you can see it. It's slightly obscured by trees, but you can see it from uh, a few walkways surrounding the uh, south side of the building. I'm sorry, that would be the east side of the building. Next. So uh, what I envision specifically, I didn't talk about this in the proposal, is that the public art would would double as seating. Um, and the inspiration for this came from this really cool circular um, picnic table that you see on the left at the Ecole de Beaux-Arts in Nantes, France. It's a art school in France. Uh, it's a just a, I think, a really kind of beautiful draw um, to uh, for for the public um, and a nice symbol of unity and um, community. Next. So here's uh, some examples of student visioning for the space. Um, new media students were asked to use artificial intelligence to, um, to just imagine what the, the space could look like. Next. So to, to answer some of your specific questions, one of them was uh, how would it benefit benefit public outside of the NAU community? Um, and because the space is shared between three departments, theater, music, and art, um, we will uh, just inherently invite the public uh, through our public events. Uh, annually, we have literally hundreds of public events including exhibitions, theater and music performances, arts festivals, holiday events, et cetera. This so just thanks. Despite being slightly tucked away, um, the area will uh, get heavy traffic from the public. Also, the space is intended to be an outdoor performance venue um, and a classroom, outdoor classroom as well. And a kind of uh, a side effect or um, tangential benefit uh, to the public is the environmental um, um, assets, um, increased green space, reduced runoff pressures, and will capture rainwater. Next. Um, the artist selection process is going to be a pretty typical RFP process. We'll form a committee made up of on and off campus constituents, including hopefully a BPAC member, uh, we'll publish a request for proposal proposals, not an RFQ with specific things. That's time. Thank you. Okay. 
Almost. <laughs> We can see the slide. Is there more after yeah. that? Yeah. Thank you. We appreciate that. Does sure. anybody have any questions? Do we feel like the public access uh, question was answered thoroughly enough? That's my biggest concern. The um, answer. Question was answered. Well, it was answered, but my question is, OK, so if I'm monitoring it for camping at night, which I mean, they also monitor Heritage Square for camping at night and things like that. Um, who's welcome to use it during the day? A anyone. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's this it would it will be the same as any other public space on campus. Who is welcome to use all the public spaces on campus during the day? Are unhoused community members welcome? Um, I I believe they are. Uh, I don't know the official policy on that. Um, I don't I don't know the official policy on that. It's um, that's that's my biggest concern is that because it is on NAU property, um, there's probably going to be some. Ex this is I can't, I can't say probably. It's a question. We can discuss. That later. is my biggest concern is, is whether or not there are exclusions. Audra has her hand raised. Oh, Audra? Yeah. Sorry, well, do you guys prefer me not to use the hand raising? Is that making it oh, different? No. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I just had a quick question about, so if you receive this grant, does any of you require you to give a certain percentage of the grant to any of you for like admin or indirect costs? Uh, I don't believe so. Um, I don't believe so. Uh, I, I mean, I would be the admin <laughs> because I'm, uh, you know, I'm the caretaker. I, I'm the, the, the responsible person. Um, and I, I would not, um, take a percentage. No, it would all, I, I would, I, 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 my intent is that it all goes to the artist. OK, so you're not working with a specific office at NAU to apply for this grant? No. OK. Well, I think I think Audra is thinking of Office of Sponsored Projects, which does take a, a pretty substantial cut from grants. But if this if this doesn't have to go through them. I, I, not to my knowledge, and I, I have not heard of that that department. I mean, I, I'm working. I, I'm working with a lot of different, uh, a lot of different units on campus. This, this, if we move forward with with phase two, it'll be a, a pretty massive project. And um, the public art component is is just a is is one piece of it. I'm curious about the design. What we're approaching three minutes. What's the plan for finalizing a design? We haven't got. We haven't. I, I mean, aside from some kind of back of the napkin uh, sketches, we haven't gotten that far because we we don't know what the what the space can can take. Um, they need to. The, the engineers need to assess it for weight loads because we don't know what modifications we can make until uh, we get that that report back from the engineers. Time for one more quick. We just needed three minutes. Oh, okay. Do we want to uh, continue, or do you have another question? We have one more question. Can we do one more minute of time. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, I just wanted to clarify: what is the budget coming from NAU on this project? Uh, so. All, all, a lot of the questions that you're asking will be phase two of the project. So, so far, the green fund has committed $16,000 and that is covering the engineering assessment. And then, Once okay. we have all that information, then we'll move into phase two, which will be another proposal for the green fund. I'm thinking the just kind of ballpark will between will be between 60 and 80,000. Um, uh, but but um, we we just don't know what we can do to this space until we get that engineering assessment. Okay, thank you. 
Are all my questions. Anybody else? Great. Thank you. Thank you, David. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay, so our next presenter is Parker Groves from Aspen LLC. Parker, you have five minutes to present with three minutes of questioning followed afterwards. And um, Annalisa or I will um, notify you at my one minute mark. All right, thank you very much, everyone. My name is Parker Groves. I am representing Aspen Management LLC here, and I am applying for the outdoor mural in the heart of the Flagstaff Flagstaff Business Center adjacent to NAU. On this call, I also have Doug Pennick and Michael O'Brien with me as representatives of the company as well for us. So next slide, please. This mural will be located um, near Milton Road and Plaza Way. This is an image of the nearest intersection towards the mural here for us. Direction perspective for us, we're looking southwest for us on Milton. Next slide. The exact address for us is 2050 South Plaza Way in Flagstaff, Arizona. For us, it was important to be able to have a centrally located mural for all public access. This area here, um, when you're in this parking lot, you have open public access to everyone with handicap accessibility from different areas as well. We also wanted to make sure this mural was located in a high visibility area so as people are coming into areas, coming into Flagstaff using I-17, Safeway being one of the nearest grocery stores, as you're coming into the area to load up for your fun time in Flagstaff, you'll be welcomed with a nice colorful mural um, called Welcome to Flagstaff. With the mural, we also wanted to make sure we were representing our neighbors in the area too. So being able to have representation in any of you is important. Can we go to the next slide for us? One more. So this is our full representation of our meal right here for us. So for us, it was incredibly important to be able to make sure all different communities and representation within the city were represented in this mural. So when we look at our, our first slide, we have Louis the Lumberjack here, which represents our NAU. For us, we wanted to make sure NAU's representation of all international students and global perspectives was being able to be represented in this mural. As you move to the L, this is a representation of a Yabachi figure in the native community. The Yabachi is a representation of Mother Earth and uh, the supernatural being. As you move to the A slide, this is a representation of the Wapati National Monument. So being one of the oldest uh, national monuments dating back to 11, 11 AD, it was important for us to be able to make sure the representation was there. Um, having Roots 66 there for us, you know, the representation of the famous highway going through Flagstaff, and that is able to help connect the East Coast and West Coast to be able to help everyone centralized here in the city of Flagstaff. During our S representation of Lowell Observatory, Lowell Observatory going all the way back to 1894 has represented the exploration and innovation of space as we know it. With, with the discovery of Pluto back in 1930, Lowell is an important part of Flagstaff's history. Hotel Monte Vista is the iconic building that everyone knows in downtown Phoenix. So there, in downtown Flagstaff, there is no other way we would be able to represent Flagstaff without being able to have the Hotel Monte Vista. For us, it was also important to be able to make sure we had our outdoor sporting community in here. Flagstaff is able to provide so many different options, whether it's snowboarding, mountain biking, frisbee golf, running, any outdoor activity, being able to represent that here through an action sport. One minute remaining. Um, our biodiversity through our animal service is incredibly important too, being able to represent that. Um, can you go to the previous slide for me, please? Some con uh, con concerns that we wanted to address here were the motif of the skeleton. So we have removed the skeleton from our initial application, educating ourselves in the representation of skeletons and the native community. 
um, wanted to have a more clear definition of Louis the Lumberjack, a representation of a clear snow border, and removal of the hammock. I'll have you go to the next slide. Next slide. It was important for us to be able to hear the commission's feedback and be able to apply that as quickly as possible. We wanted to make sure that we have clear cultural representation from all areas and respect. Our artist commitment was incredibly focused on making sure everyone was taken care of. Thank you, Parker. Thank you. Have any questions? How does the lumberjack reflect international perspectives? So I heard that that represents international students and perspectives, and I don't understand it. You know, for it's the high representation that NAU, as it has grown in its STEM, its STEM programs in NAU, with the influx of international students have been that have been able to focus at NAU. It was another representation that we thought would be helpful for us. And so, with the clear definition and evolution of the lumberjack and the evolution of our education and our students, we wanted to make sure everyone was represented. For sure. Hey, this is Doug. I was also just going to tag in to say, you know, all of these items throughout this mural really do represent like a cultural or a community landmark for Flagstaff. And AU is a big part of that, but it attracts so many more than just Flagstaff or Arizona natives, right? There really is a, a more of a national and even international perspective of uh, exposure of those students that come in and just learn to fall in love with Flagstaff in Northern Arizona and stay. So really that's the intent there. Does the dispensary sign exist currently? The dispensary does. sign does. Um, it is currently on display there. We've also worked with Corey and city planning, and this has been approved as a mural and not as signage. To build on that, though, the, the image we're seeing right here, it looks like the dispensary sign is integrated into the mural. And I have no objection to the weed drugs myself, but I know that uh, it could be controversial knowing that this is funded by tax dollars to, to give the impression that we are supporting uh, the dispensary. Is there a way to separate the two? This is uh, this is Absolutely. Michael. That's a that's a sorry. Sorry, step on you there, Parker. Uh, this is Michael. Um, we we looked at that. Uh, that's a great question. Um, our our intention was really to, you know, if you look at this, you can see that the color, the underlying color of the dispensary sign, which is just what happened to be the sign matching the building. We actually wanted to paint that. You can see it pops out. Uh, there's the black lettering, and then there's like a gray box under it. Yeah. We actually wanted to paint that white um, so that it fades off into the clouds. We actually thought that looked more separated, but we're open to feedback on that. Like if you want to have some clear delineation. So basically it would just be that Ponderosa dispensary black, uh, lettering popping out and it wouldn't look so much like a, a sign integrated. It would look like it fades off into the clouds. I thought that was personally aesthetically more pleasing, but we wanted to be sensitive to exactly what you just said and make sure that there's not that perception is being endorsed or anything. So we're happy to like, I, I think we could create some type of a border in the clouds. We could expand the clouds a little bit, um, or we could do the, the white under the sign. Um, if we think that looks better, we're happy to show it multiple ways, but um, it's definitely, we're definitely able to provide some separation or a gap if that's preferable for the commission. And we're at time. That's at three minutes of questioning. Here. Does anybody need more questions? Yeah, we need yeah, all in favor, one more minute. Aye. Aye. So I have a question. Have you considered a different wall? Um, we haven't because we really don't have another wall that has any exposure. So this is the uh, north wall of the building. When you turn into that southwest off of Milton where the intersection showed, this is where we get the most traffic. The, the, um, the west side is the back of the building with the dumpsters and, and is blocked by other buildings from Milton. Uh, I wish I had better exposure there to the street of, uh, for Milton, um, but I don't. The front or the east side is all uh, storefront glass. And then the storefront glass really wraps around the other side of the building. So this is actually the 
only wall we have, but it is also by far the most prominent wall because that um, Plaza Way that uh, wraps off of Milton and through that Safeway shopping area is where there's really the heaviest traffic in the area. Is that sign already there? The Ponderosa dispensary sign? Is, is that what you're asking? Yes. Yeah, the Ponderosa dispensary sign is already there. That was our existing signage on the location. And when we when we just redid the sign recently, uh, we were not able to relocate that. Okay. So that top strip. So <laughs> yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Awesome. Does anybody else have any questions? Anyone online have questions? Nothing for me. Great. Thank you all. Um, thank you, Parker. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, just so that all of our applicants know, you're welcome to stay because this is an open and public meeting, but we are going to have a full another presentation on a different topic before we take up any voting. Um, you know, these meetings are recorded, so you can always watch and because you're not allowed to speak during the discussion. So it's up to you whether you want to stay or not, because it's, it's going to be a while. We have a big presentation. So I just wanted you to know. The recordings are on websites? Yes. Okay. Yes, the recordings go on the website. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Okay, so. Our next item is age one, and I'm going to just kind of briefly introduce our presenter, um, Eliza Kressman, uh, who is the principal of Eliza Kressman Consulting, but she was the former Beautification Arts and Sciences Program Manager who had the wisdom and insight to hire me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> uh, nearly five years ago. It's been that long. So uh, anyway, without further ado, um, I'm going to let Eliza carry this topic. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Thanks for including me in your agenda. Um, I do want to say before I get into the presentation um, that this has been a great project to work on and also a huge thank you to Jana and Dave because they provided a lot of effort behind this as well. And a thank you to Kristen and Craig for helping with the community engagement in-person events that we had this past spring. And uh, it's been a lot of fun and I've learned a lot. So tonight I'm going to talk about the findings from community engagement surveys and peer city research that we've done. Let's see, next slide please. So I do want to mention before I get started as well that the two main deliverables of this project are actually two reports. One is an executive summary that's about six pages of written material, and the other is a document that's about 35 pages. So know that if uh, you want to get much more in depth into our findings, you will have that opportunity. And tonight I'm going to cover more the overarching findings that we um, that we have to share. So why this report now? As you may know, the city's contract for leadership of the sectors is um, ending next July. And we met with Creative Flagstaff and they really wanted us to do this as well as we agreed it was a good idea um, to take this moment to really gather priorities from the community, find out what's working, what's not. Um, are there things that are missing? and to inform future resource allocation, particularly of the city BBB tax. Next. So we sought to answer some overarching questions. How are the recent offerings serving the community? Um, how is the current funding supporting the sectors? What's missing? What resources are needed? How does the community want future funding used? And what is the vision for Flagstaff's future for these sectors? Next slide. And I hope you can hear me. I'm fighting off a cold right now. <laughs> so we engaged in some different um, outreach activities. So one is an online community survey. We had over 100 participants. Conversations with the art, culture, and science sectors. These were in-person meetings with about 50 participants where people rotated in groups uh, to different table topics and were able to share creative ideas and input. 
leader interviews, and this is reaching out to key leadership within the sectors. Um, I reached out to 50 people and 25 wanted to have that in-depth virtual conversation. And then we also did some research on peer cities, which I will get into a little bit later. Next slide. To give you an idea of um, who participated, here's from the public survey. The majority were interested community members, which is great. We wanted to reach them. Uh, nonprofits uh, were also a large slice of um, people who responded. We also reached a good amount of artists and creatives, as well as some government employees, volunteers, and also, um, let's see, some for for profit as well, a small slice. Next slide. With the leadership interviews, um, the majority were nonprofit leaders. Uh, we also had city leadership and city staff, elected officials, commissioners. Several of you also participated in this artists and creative and business reps. So now I will go into um, summaries of the findings. Next. We'll start with the successes. Next slide. So this first slide are programs and initiatives that came up the most frequently in our outreach activities as seen by people as successful. Art X Festival, there's a lot of excitement about the future. And this one came up more than any other item. And I just wanted to mention it was also the most criticized. So as this new initiative you know, has started, people are really responding strongly and the community has a lot of opinions about it. So that was the number one item. Flagstaff Festival of Science came up as uh, having a great event in inclusion of youth. Public art projects that, that were mentioned, the traffic signal cabinet wraps, 10% um, of our online respondents mentioned this as successful. Uh, they said things like it provides an un uh, unexpected moment of joy, the, they love the color, the inclusion of different artists. The recent Multicultural County Park Sculpture Exhibition was mentioned quite a bit, as well as the Coquinino Scroll Art Fence at the airport and also murals in general. We had a few folks that said that they were tired of murals or did not like murals, but a lot of people um, expressed that they love the murals in town and you know might call out their favorite one. The CCA was celebrated for its exhibitions and events, including recent shows about immigration, um, environmental issues such as drought and water, and also for events like the annual awards. Beautification and action grants. That's on everyone's mind tonight. Um, this program was celebrated for really enabling people to apply for money to make their own visions um, come to fruition. I also did hear from several people that they'd never heard of these, including people that are somewhat within this world. So they were very excited to hear about this and wanted to um, just expand more and more. <laughs> And the Flagstaff Symphony Orchestra came up as providing collaborative programming and also generally being a very well-run organization. Next slide. I won't go through all of these, but these are also others that received multiple mentions. Um, if you do read the full report, you'll see everything that everybody mentioned because there were also things that just came up once but these were ones that came up with more um, frequency as well. I'll give you a minute to read it. All right, next slide, please. So one of the activities we did at the um, community engagement sessions was a SWOT analysis led by uh, David McIntyre. And so I wanted to give you a snapshot of that outcome, so next slide. It won't be a surprise to you that a, a strength of Flagstaff is the natural beauty. Um, there's a sense of strong community support for the arts, uh, the unique blend of artistic and scientific institutions such as m &A and Lowell were also called out. Uh, limited affordable venues. This was a theme throughout the feedback, a strong theme. Fragmented collaboration among organizations 
and challenges with retaining staff and volunteers. Uh, also a lot of opportunities. Um, there's interest in improving old venues or creating new ones, um, leveraging Flagstaff's unique geographic setting between Santa Fe and Los Angeles and the unique things that Flagstaff has to offer, and expanding partnerships with NAU in particular. That was another theme that came up quite a bit. Threats, no surprise with this first one, I'm sure, to the room, the rising living costs. Um, while many felt there is a very vibrant uh, spirit of volunteerism, there's some that feel it is declining. And I'm glad to hear that this last one, at least for now, is safe. There is concern that the BBB would not be renewed. So that was wonderful to hear that that has been renewed. And there's some concern just that in the future that might go away. Next. So uh, next I will speak about areas for improvement that came from all of the outreach activities. Uh, next. Funding and resource allocation. So right now Flagstaff has over 40 local nonprofits and Creative Flagstaff allocates about 400 to 600,000 a year to the nonprofit community. Um, and that is a larger percentage than peer cities that we looked at, most of them, and uh, also Arizona cities. And that is mainly funded by the BBB tax, as you all may know. Uh, with that said, there is still a desire to increase overall funding for these sectors. Another key item that came up is uh, individuals would love to have the opportunity to apply for the annual funding from Creative Flagstaff, such as artists and creatives. And there's a call to simplify grant processes and particularly for smaller organizations. So you're having to fill out a pretty long application and you might get two to $5,000. And so some of the smaller organizations found that a bit onerous. And also uh, we're asking that, you know, right now there's the amount you get through the Creative Flagstaff annual grants is based on past expenses and budgets. And so there's, a call from some to remove that so that there can be more growth in the smaller nonprofits. Uh, next, collaboration and inclusivity. Um, one of the downsides of, of having so much funding and so many nonprofits is that there can be a sense of splintering in the community. Uh, there is a sense sometimes that groups are competing for the same volunteers, the same funds, the same resources. And there's also a sense that it can be a little bit clicky at times <laughs> and that uh, some groups don't necessarily make new people feel welcome. So people want opportunities to gather and collaborate more. Like after the community conversations, some people said, you know, oh, would love more opportunities where we can sit around a table and discuss ideas together. There's um, a call to break down silos between groups such as the city, Northern Arizona, Arizona University, and the lead nonprofit. And a call for greater inc inclusivity of youth, indigenous communities, and other underrepresented groups. Um, there's a recognition that there's been progress made in this area, and people want to continue and expand that. Next. Venues. This came up strongly. Um, there is a desire for more versatile and affordable venues. Um, people had a lot of ideas. One is creating a constellation of venues across Flagstaff and exploring art and culture hubs. So using more non-traditional spaces, uh, less expensive um, options to like a huge new building to really activate in particular downtown, south side and the east side and creating maybe even uh, kind of art districts within those areas. There's definitely a lot of interest in improving or even moving existing venues. In particular, CCA came up. While people appreciate a lot of what they're showing with their exhibitions and their programming, there was a strong feeling that the building is not serving the group or the community as well as it could. It's a very old building and needs some updates. And I know it's been a struggle for Creative Flagstaff. So some people really wanted to see that change. Uh, also, 
people want to consider a, a new flagship venue or center. We have venues like MNA, we have venues at NAU, uh, but there is a sense that we could use a flagship venue that's in a more accessible location, particularly for people without, um, without a vehicle. Um, and so the idea of the new Indigenous Cultural Center was supported by some. The idea of having some sort of venue that can really hold large crowds came up with, with some of the input. And so there are folks that are wanting that larger um, flagship venue, which of course has some financial implications, but there is a call for that as well. Next. So now I'm going to talk about the community vision and strategic opportunities. Next. So art, culture, and science as central to Flagstaff's identity did come up quite a bit. Participants see that Flagstaff has a lot to offer in these areas, and they want to embrace and expand that identity. Um, there is a desire to market Flagstaff as an art and culture center, which I know there is some of that happening, but people wanted to expand that and um, have it be a strong message, um, not just as an outdoor destination. So. Well, we know that that's happening. There's a, a desire for more of that. Um, there's also a wish to move from more traditional to more contemporary offerings. Uh, one, one respondent mentioned that it's okay to have shiny steel next to kind of the log cabin aesthetic of Flagstaff and that these things can coexist. Others would like to see a bit more color. And um, there's just a sense that bravery was called for in our various offerings, um, which I think Flagstaff is beginning to do more and more, and we definitely are seeing more of that. Um, but I did find that thread throughout the uh, input. Next. To sort of illustrate this, um, one question we asked is Flagstaff can and should be known as one of the Southwest's most creative cities and do you agree or disagree? And that question actually came from strate strategic planning that Creative Flagstaff did. Um, as you can see, the large majority agrees with the statement. I will mention that those that said no uh, felt pretty adamant about that. Some people felt that it was pushing in a, an identity on Flagstaff that may or may not be embraced. And others felt that we really had to reach to get to that. With that said, we are seeing that the majority of people feel that this is a worthy goal to reach for. Next. Supporting emerging artists, creatives, and entrepreneurs. Um, this came out that people would love more training, um, particularly in business fundraising and grant writing for individuals and nonprofits, uh, training on things like nonprofit best practices, and there's a call for more mentorship and artists in residency opportunities. So by mentorship, not just for artists, but also nonprofits. So a new nonprofit could maybe learn from a more established nonprofit, for example. For the residency opportunities, people want to bring in artists from elsewhere, but provide uh, opportunities for local artists through that activity. So um, that was something that came out as well. Next. Engagement with technology. Um, people really like the idea of an app, like an art app or a flag app, to promote the happenings in the sectors and also make it more clear with 40 plus nonprofits. There's so much going on. I know that when I lived in Flagstaff, I felt like I couldn't keep up because it was so vibrant. And so having something to help you sort through those opportunities and know that they're happening. And people mentioned Flag 365 as helpful, but not fully fulfilling the need of that. And then finding ways to engage an increasingly digital audience. Um, I just sat in on a training here in New Mexico where they talked only about digital art, and I had no idea how much was out there. For example, they've taken road signs in New Mexico, and you can pull up, like, I think it's through uh, Snapchat, you can pull up information on that historical figure that an artist has created, and it tells a more full story about that marker or that place. Um, and some of it's even way more out there, like when you go to the Roundhouse in Santa Fe, 
there's this piece that you can only see digitally that's uh, like Native American imagery. So it is interesting what's happening out there. Next. So we also spoke with peer cities, and those are cities that have some similar characteristics to Flagstaff, such as being nestled in a beautiful natural environment, places that have a university, maybe a sim similar population size. Uh, next slide. We reached out to 22 cities, and these are the ones that came back and wanted to have that conversation with us or fill out a survey. Um, and so we have case studies from these seven cities in our report, and I'm just going to go through a few examples with you now. So first is Asheville. Uh, they use the concept of creative placemaking rather than public art. They find it more inclusive. Um, I think as an example, a lot of the beautification activities that Flagstaff is engaged in are falling somewhat more into that creative placemaking um, realm. They also are really into temporary public art and temporary offerings. They find that they can be more nimble in their response to the community and what the community wants and how that's changing and the expressions that people want to bring forward. They also, they used to have their own exhibition and event space, as I understand it, and they decided to forego that because the sector in their city was so vibrant there. I think she said there's like 212, you know, uh, art collaboratives, galleries, theaters, et cetera. And so rather than creating their own space and having to maintain that, they just focus on supporting the sector as a whole. Unfortunately, since we spoke to them, they've had that horrible um, natural disaster. So they are rebuilding. And I imagine the art community will be a big part of that. Next. Bellingham, Washington, what really stood out to us is they have a parcel of land that's lakefront that is a brown field. And um, rather than pouring a lot of money into building a new, you know, fancy venue, they activated the space in a way that was uh, faster and less expensive. So they have this parcel which has murals, live music, pump track. Etc. I think there's um, some places to eat and such, and it's been extremely popular. Next, Bentonville, Arkansas has the Crystal Bridges Museum, and it's an interesting example of how a major institution can catalyze more diverse and broad community engagement. For example, they have an art, <coughs> an art and social impact accelerator, and their whole model and focus on that kind of engagement is, I haven't seen anything quite like it before. I found it very inspiring. So if that kind of intersection is interesting to you, you may wanna check it out. Next, Boulder, um, they're really hyper-focused on supporting the sector and making it more resilient through workshops and networking events with artists and creatives. And that is really their main mission. Um, they've also had a lot of similar issues with venues that we have. And I believe they just finished a venue study not too long ago. So there is definitely some parallels with Boulder as well. Next. So this is a very condensed version of some potential pathways forward. The full report has, I don't know, something like five pages of this but I wanted to provide something more digestible tonight. So uh, next slide. Despite the fact that there is a good amount of money going out to the nonprofit sector here, there is this desire to grow the pie of available funding. Um, specific ideas are increasing corporate donations, developing a culture of, of philanthropy, a larger culture in Flagstaff and recognizing that will take time and not just focusing on things like planned giving and major donors, but also mechanisms like crowdsource funding and more private public partnerships. For example, is there a grant that maybe the city or another entity is very well poised to receive? Next. So this gets back to venues. <laughs> There is a desire for either a centralized hub or hubs or satellite venues. So for example, um, some of our flagship organizations like MNA or CCA, 
having um, a little piece of that that you can interact with someplace like downtown so that um, tourists can more organically come across those offerings. People without a vehicle can still enjoy those. Um, there's definitely an interest in a venue study, and so uh, people are calling for that. And there was also one person who stood out who had a word of caution. She said that everywhere she's lived wants more venues, and so that that idea fills her with terror. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, it fills her with terror that to do this kind of study. But I would say the vast majority of people really were interested in what we would learn through that even if it's no action is needed or we really need to focus on improving the venues that we have um, or we need to consider building something new or some constellation of venues um, as i mentioned there is that interest as well and some for a flagship venue that's new or a moving you know cca or something next strength and marketing and outreach this came out as a strong theme as well um, People want to see the improved promotion of local events, uh, more coordinated efforts amongst groups. You know, when you have 40 plus groups all doing their own thing, it can be a little overwhelming. So, um, you know, how do we bring things together? Elevate Flagstaff's profile as a creative destination and also greater visibility of the city's beautification, arts, and sciences program. Next. Foster inclusivity and community engagement. So outreach to underserved communities, not just about art opportunities, but also the grant opportunities as well. And groups that haven't come forward to apply, why haven't they? And just making sure that we're we're reaching those non-traditional partners and people who have maybe not known about this. Uh, youth focused programs came out as well. And uh, the idea of weaving youth into existing programs and structures. For example, the idea came up that maybe there needs to be a youth representative on BPAC <coughs> in the future or a youth um, advisory committee or something, uh, maybe on Creative Flagstaff's board as well. Next. We also asked people to vision into the future and we got some really cool ideas from over a hundred points of interaction. So. This is the most distilled, um, you know, we had we had like pages and pages of vision. And here is just um, some of the main themes that came out of that is building on this vibrant art scene and robust science sector, really seeing Flagstaff and promoting it as a destination for major events and fostering a spirited cultural scene for locals. Enhancing key areas and really those areas that came up were downtown, south side, and east side with multiple venues and activities. So that idea of that constellation, creating kind of sparks of creativity and engagement across the city and prioritizing inclusivity and engagement and uh, specific ideas about that, you know, in, in addition to the youth um, are things like trainings on working with indigenous uh, and native communities for city staff, but also others within the sector. Uh, yeah, and I guess I would just say one thing I realized I did not cover very much is some of the structural pieces. So I'll just touch on that very briefly. There is interest in exploring, you know, is the RFP the right tool? We might not be able to answer that question this time around, but it is a question that some people posed. Would a mechanism like an MO, MOU between the city and the lead agency maybe be, you know, something like that? Should that be considered? There's definitely an appetite to provide additional funding to um, whichever group is chosen to be this lead agency, as long as there is um, accountability and transparency, especially around budgets. And there, but there is support for that as long as, you know, the scope is really clear and that the lead agency is uplifting the goals of the community and the city as well. Um, and so those are just some of the major structural pieces and I just wanted to see if anyone has questions. Do we have access to the full report? It sounds like there's so much more information. Almost. Almost, it's, not, it's still in draft form. It's not quite there. When, when it's available, yes. Okay. We kind of thought it was gonna be at this point. Yeah. It's gonna be scheduled, but uh, uh, well, I just had to deal with with 
and, and deal back with us, too. Well, that's what I mean. She had to deal with us. <laughs> so, unfortunately, that takes time. <laughs> we are so close. We're getting there. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Anything else anybody has for Eliza? It sounds like it's going to be really interesting. Any general reaction and, and discussion? I feel like I need to digest it a little bit. Yeah. That's, the, that's one of the reasons why I want to see the report is I feel like reactions to this truncated version, it's, I might be missing something that's, that's really important. You've put a lot of work into this. I'd like to appreciate the full body of what you've done. I think good job, Eliza. I, I, yeah. I think you were super thorough and you did a great job at trying to touch people in various um, parts of the city. Uh, I like the presentation. I like the way that you used uh, visuals and imagery, but I also like the way that you captured um, some some quotes and some themes. I think analyzing qualitative data is always such a challenge, and it seems to me like you have done a tremendous job. And so I too am interested in in seeing the full report. But what you've got here, I think, is just tremendous, and I can't imagine the volumes of um, qualitative data that you had to go through to code and <laughs> find common themes. It's it's no easy task. So hats off. Congrats and thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, there it was interesting. We I had about 100 pages of notes from the leadership interviews alone, which was kind of surprising to me. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I had some help. I've been working well. The city has been a great help. And then Erin, um, who is our AmeriCorps Vista intern back in 2020, she's been sub consulting with me to help me uh, create all the charts and graphs. So the full report does have a lot of charts and graphs as well. And I would also just say is once you see the reports, if you have questions that come up or you find something that doesn't seem quite right and you want to ask me about it, feel free to reach out. Um, it's art sciences survey, wait, art science survey at gmail.com or Jana and the other, the rest of the staff know how to get a hold of me as well. So I do also welcome that in the future. This, this feels like an important enough thing that I wonder if maybe once the full report is available, we have some time to go over it if we should schedule a discussion. Yeah, make another request. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's kind of where I'm, I'm going with this. Is I, I feel like that this deserves a thoughtful response. Great. Anybody online have any questions or comments? I would just like to say, as someone who participated in the roundtable discussions, I feel seen and heard by what you presented, and I just want to say thank you for that. Thank you, and thanks for participating. It was nice to see you there. All right, so it sounds like to be continued. <laughs> there is a lot to digest, and um, let me know if I can be of help in the future as well or if you um, want me to help kind of in any way, Dave and Jenna, just let me know. And if I'm available, I will, I'll be there. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all, good night. Good night. Good night. Jenna, are we moving back? To yes, we're trying to move back. And um, I do want to remind the commission that they have different ways to approve. We have approval, Full approval, you can run and get started tomorrow, right? Um, we have the uh, provisional approval. The applicant has to come back to be that. So, okay. And then we have the contingent approval. That is a stated component, but staff can just review it. You know, an, an example of that is the African-American mural where we knew what it looked like, but we wanted to make it um, contingent upon them raising a certain amount of funds. And then staff was able to just say, hey, that funding's in, now we're going to distribute our kind of funding. Um, so just to remind you, you have all three different options. You also can just, you know, continue or you can, you know, ask them to come back, uh, you know, uh, you know, next round if uh, you think something just critical is too missing. So 
Um, with that, I guess let's just, shall we go back in order? Could we put Laramie and Parker at the end or the beginning? I feel like they're the same questions. Sure. Is that possible? Yes, it's possible. Okay. Oh, yeah, You're the chair. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, it's, a, yes. it's a commission. It's a okay. commission. Yes. So, um, all right, let's go to Jenna Walzak, CSA a local market. Did anybody have any questions or comments on that one? What that was the one that didn't have the final design approved, right? Yeah, but it sounded it like was, it was pretty solid. It was close to the final, but just the owners wanted to see the final. Yeah. And I know how Kaylee works. She usually adds detail and things at the end. Yeah. Right, but we could approve it contingent upon city staff looking at the final design. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Would you like to make that motion? Well, I think he has to say. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Maybe I did, but I forgot it. Whether <laughs> <laughs> um, the no. Claire's or Audra have anything? I um, don't have anything for. Sorry, go ahead, Claire. Oh no, I don't have anything either. Go for it. I have a quick logistical question. Um, the. The meeting said that this was going from four to six. I'm on another grant committee that meets at six. Do you think this committee meeting is going to run past six? Yes, yes. possibly could. Yes. Yeah. That okay. Is, I am on that same yeah committee, so yeah. Audrey and I are not uh, in a great position time wise here. We still have a quorum. Yeah. We still have, yeah, we yeah. Would still have a quorum. So I'm sorry if we have to lose you. We can see if there's any extra. Yeah, if, if you have any comments, maybe you'd like to give on any of them. It, maybe this would just be, you know, even though you're, we would miss your voting. If there's any um, comments that you would like to just kind of put forth for your other commissioners to consider, and then we'll try to get through as many voting as we can. Okay. Um, all right, I'll go. Uh, I uh, I don't have problems with any of these. Um, the only thing that I do want to bring up is just the branding of Louis the Lumberjack in the Flagstaff mural. Um, seems a little bit uh, too much, just like that is their exact mascot. Um, although I don't think there's something wrong with acknowledging NAU uh, being part of our culture, I do think that having their mascot um, isn't great. Um, and then I think that's it. I think that's the only thing I have. I have two things really quickly. Um, the proposal from NAU, uh, I do have concerns that the Office of Sponsored Projects was not consulted. It's my understanding that you cannot apply for an NAU, a grant for NAU without going through that office. Um, and I know of other cases where the proposal didn't go through the office and then they had to backtrack and go through and it caused a big headache. So I would just say if you do approve this, make it conditional on consulting with uh, whoever is appropriate to consult with that any you just to ensure that there aren't required indirect costs to be paid to the university. Um, I don't feel comfortable using city taxpayer money to pay administrative costs to any of you. The other thing I was going to mention is for the final one with the Flagstaff, um, it says welcome to Flagstaff. I did, I, we ran out of time. I wanted to ask them how indigenous voices informed their design and if they spoke directly with any indigenous artists. I think the artist is indigenous. I, okay. Oh. Yeah, the, actually, the artist, sorry. I'm not allowed to answer this. Sorry. Is, Discussion only, so I'm sorry, you have to be quiet. <laughs> so I want to speak to the NAU thing. I just wrote a grant. So OSP takes money from people who do research and collect data. Um, I, I wrote a grant and I had to run it through NAU Foundation. I wrote a $20,000 grant and what Foundation took was $1,000 out of the twenty. So I think that they will take something, but they won't take very much at all, um, just as a heads up. I, I, I like your comment about the fact that he should probably check with someone at NAU, and my guess is that it goes through foundation and that if, if there's any 
cost to be to come from it. It will be minimal. Again, my twenty thousand, um, I had to give them one. What um, do you mind if I ask Michael what um, organization you were applying for the grant with? It was a Gate Foundation grant. Uh, through yeah. LA. The money came from Helios. Okay. I have also applied for grants through NEU, and it's my understanding that any government grant funds do have to go through sponsored projects, but I just, I would just prefer that that be verified before we approve it. Okay. I was concerned that the director of the school board design doesn't, isn't aware of the existence of OSB. That, that's a, a bit of a red flag for me. It may not be tenure track. And All right, Eli, I, I want to hear from Audra and Claire a little bit more before they have to leave. So is there any other concerns um, that you guys want to share before you have to pop off to the other meeting? Those were the two main things. Do we all, do you also want us to share any positives or encouragement that we have? Well, let, let me hear from uh, Claire Johnson if she has any concerns and then we'll go back. Um, I think my only other concern that I had uh, was with the project from the foul leg. Um, the just concept, sorry, I don't know where I'm going off. Uh, the concept um, that's been proposed just isn't super clear um, to me. I feel like I, I would prefer it to be a little bit clear, more clearly uh, um, delineated, like exactly what the story is that they're wanting to tell um but that it's not like a deal breaker for me that's just um something i noticed and that i i would prefer yeah, no. audra do you want to share some kudos um just as far as ones that really jumped out to me i really liked the csa mural i also really liked the um the uh one i'm so sorry the gas station <laughs> yeah jill, jill sands yes thank you um i really liked that one and i think that the particular location of it has the potential to make a very positive impact in that neighborhood um and then the only other thing like i i did already ask the question about getting um bbb money from two different sources i still am not super excited about that but i understand you guys have talked it over and made a decision so th that's fine uh and that's it thank you claire johnson anything else you want to share um i really do like the projects from um the csa i really enjoyed also the um jill sands project um i think there's a lot of really exciting things that people have brought to us so i think that's that's great and that's it. That's all for me. Well, let's see if we can get a vote in. Let's go back to the uh, CSA local market. Um, and Jenna Walzak. Did, did you want to make a motion? Yeah, I'd like, I mean, I, I love this um, proposal. I, I just think it would be, um, you know, too surprising if we voted, uh, accepted it, and then the design gets changed completely. So. I'd like a condition. I'd like to move that we conditionally approve with city staff uh, looking at the final design. We'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Anyone against? One is approved. That's and Jill Sands? Yeah. The, the gas station. Anybody else have anything they wanted to say about Jill Sands? I feel like. I feel like. Everybody's reflected generally. I agree with Audra. It's a good location. They've tried a lot of things on that corner. Yeah. Um, so I think we should keep putting stuff out there and see what sticks. Yep. yep. So um, great. Um, does anybody want to make a motion on that? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Anyone abstaining? In honor of Chris Farrell. <laughs> okay. All right, Joel Geist. Discussion? Um, yeah, any discussion on that one? I I did want to say one thing, and I think it's reflective of a couple things here tonight. I really like that artists are coming back to us. 
And I like that they're using these funds to create things that are bigger than maybe the initial grant allowed. It's it's like a test, it's like a little test piece. They go, they they deliver on something, they do a great job, and we can look at it and we can say, yes, this deserves to be bigger, this deserves to be better, and deserves to be more. Um, so and and I think that there we've got a few people like that today. So um, I just wanted to put that out there. But, uh, uh, I, I agree completely. I wanted to ask you when the when he comes back next year, what's he going to start proposing for inside the tunnel? I know. Yeah. Yeah. Besides, the will make sign, and now yeah, it's time yeah. to start moving in. It's a special tunnel. It should be fantastic. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and there were a lot of suggestions for things that can be done to expand this project. Mm -hmm. And um, it would be nice if it could be done now. I can't wait till he puts actual sheep in there. I will, yeah. I will add that we do need to show this to ADOT. Um, so if there's, and I know that he didn't quite land on his Denver glyph Aspen. So if you do want to make it contingent on staff, um, but you know, we, we won't be able to let it go forward until ADOT sees it. They didn't vote on it last time. It wasn't required. They just wanted to see it, um, you know, before we put it up. Yeah. And out of respect for Dave's comment, I, I do feel like if, if we see a rash of Aspen, mutilations then we could put a plaque or something on it that yeah. explains please don't do this but yeah i'm comfortable um, i mean I'm, yeah okay however the commission wants to proceed i just okay it's okay. one of those thoughts you know no it's a great no, thought. Good. i move to approve as submitted yeah Second. all in favor all right. all right. all right objections any abstaining um okay jump on your second Oh, All right, sorry. I've got to get going. Have a good night, everybody. Hey, thank, thank you, uh, commissioners. Thank you, Andrew. I have to leave too. Um, really, really briefly, I just remembered one other concern I had about the NAU one. He talked about phase one and phase two, and it sounded like the artist piece would be in phase two, but they haven't approved phase one yet. So that was one other concern I had. Um, yeah. I forgot. Sorry, I forgot to mention it earlier. But thank you. Uh, okay, thank you, everybody. I'm sorry I have to go. Sorry, thank you. Thank we you. love you. Okay. Okay. Now. Uh, the uh, the the both the I guess it's the project both printed and as well as as a as a final. Uh, does anybody have any discussion on this one? I like the project. I just feel like like we might consider making this contingent on everything else coming together because this is such a huge thing in terms of where different pockets of money coming from and it, it just seems like there's we consider maybe something like specific i mean i i know on the african-american mural we said that they had you know a certain percentage Can you in pull place up the mm -hmm. i i do like the idea i do like the concept i think it's super creative i think it's something we haven't funded before but there's a lot of yeah, and it it also had you know kind of two phases, but our part is so little, right? That's compared the other part. to you know, so if they get you know one of the major other fundings, would we feel comfortable? Is my question. Instead of like they have to get everything, right? <laughs> I think she said they were a and person with the fifty thousand dollars was very. Seem, they seem to think they were going to get that 50. And it says they've right? already raised they 70, get, If they get 50. Yeah. And they've already raised 78,000. The fact that they were able to raise that much without the grants, I think. Have they raised that 78 or is that yeah. 50 part of it that she said they were still 51, talking? 51,000 is what's remaining to raise, according to this budget. GCROA was still. That is interesting. So that's what I thought they said. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was still up in the air. It's, part of the map. it's coming, she said. They thought it was coming based on the last meeting they had. But right. That's a hopeful total yeah, fund right. raised. Okay. Right. But that's 78,000. So, I mean, if you want to make it contingent on that one, then, I mean, that's Which an one? obvious one, right? Yeah, or, 58, I think that's I think that's respectable. I mean, because if they've got eighty or $90,000, I feel like... Or 70. I mean, we yeah. don't have to, we can distribute, you know, 50% and then 50% later on too. So you guys can, you know, we, we have that discretion as staff. I want to encourage this kind of project. Yes. Yeah. 
And, and that seventy-eight thousand has already been raised. They need fifty-one thousand more, including ours. But they're waiting for what they granted. Seventy-eight. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. I would say that if they get that grant. Yeah. Okay. So on the G uh, I, I can't read. Can I? Yes. Can I ask if if they don't get that grant but get a similar sized grant that would still be appropriate? So yeah. I don't kind of lock them into one funding source. So make it contingent on a a, a dollar amount rather than a funding source. So a fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, so yeah. So that's reasonable. Fifty thousand yeah. dollars. Totally we approve contingent that they find that fifty thousand okay. dollars. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone against? Anyone abstain? Okay. And you. This is a fun topic. <laughs> Love the cackle. <laughs> it, I think one of the questions that you guys all raised about this possible uh, funding source is: it, is this premature? Yes. Yes. Uh, because you can ask that they just come back and. and yeah, we and, need the engineering you know, Yeah, I I feel like, and and, and that you just really unsettled by that there might be a requirement. Mm -hmm. um, and that we might lose part of it to administration. Well, we can also make them contingent upon. I I personally would like to support NAU. I mean, we saw in Eliza's report how much people talked about NAU, right? Yes, they talked about the Flag Subsidy Orchestra, which performs there. I mean, NAU comes up, and I think to to you know somehow deny just eight thousand dollars to such a big project that will really um, provide a nice space. I mean, the Flag Subsidy Orchestra is right there, right next to a walking distance. So you have. So I would I would suggest we make it contingent on you know if the engineer if it's possible in terms of the phase one, and then if folks want to have some sort of threshold mm -hmm. on assuming foundation or OSP doesn't take 20%. I mean, whatever you want to do, but I would. So so if you guys would like to review that, then you need to make it provisional. And, and you, can, you can approve it now and then make it provisional if you guys want to see it. If you just want to leave it to staff to determine, um, which we're happy to, that's not a problem. Um, but I, I would need to hear, you know, you know, how much then of, if, if it does, a part goes to admin, is too much for you. You're leaving a lot of judgment to staff on that. Whereas waiting for the engineering report and kind of reviewing a, you know, their RFP to make sure that it's, you know, good. That's something staff can do, you know, very easily. The other thing that I want to point out, I'm sorry, is that to your point with Thalwig, you said it's a big budget and ours is just this little bitty. I mean, it's the same thing here, right? They they're pouring money into all of this work and all they're asking for is um, a small amount in terms of the coal budget to beautify the space. So do you want to make it contingent upon us staff getting clarification? I'm not ready for a motion yes. yet. Okay. We're still yes. discussing. Yeah. Can I make a, a point? Um, yeah. I know with the city, we have an indirect fee unless the funding source expressly prohibits indirect fees. And I don't think that's in our guidelines, but I wonder if you can talk to legal about that. whether we're allowed to do that on the fly like this. Um, but so the impact could restrict. OK, we can say that's not an eligible expense for the grant. And so we can we can check on that. I know that is I've managed grants for the city before where we we are supposed to charge it indirect, but because the grantor specifically said we do not accept that. You know. I want to still ask the question, is this public or Because I, I want to know if I show up with 15 eight year olds at 10 o'clock in the morning when somebody wants to have a class out there, am I allowed to stay and can they use their squirt guns? Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, but can they? I mean, like, why do you think well, they can? Well, no, I'm asking. I'm, I don't know if they can or can. That's all I'm asking. I, I just want confirmation that they can. So you not, not whether it's public. It's publicly accessible. What, whether or not it's yeah, whether or not it's publicly so, accessible. I mean, space. any you know, a park can be taken over for event. Sure, you 
can maybe not use it as like if Wheeler Park has an event in it, you can't particularly use it, you know, for everything that you want to do because the events there. Understood. So how but I, I want to understand how your what is the threshold? Like like are there restricted times that the public can or can't use? Like I don't I, I feel like NAU creates a, a layer that we don't necessarily understand our access to. Or at least I don't. I don't feel educated about what my access to that facility would be. And I don't so feel like he answered it. I, I don't I, I don't feel like he answered it entirely because it is kind of in that restricted space. You know, can I go there if I'm not camping? Can I go there at two o'clock in the morning and be in that space? Well, I don't know. You can't in a normal park. You either. can't in our park. Well, yeah. I, so but I mean yeah. those are those are just those are just questions I have. I'm not saying it's it's a plus or minus. I really like the idea of collaborating with any. Just for the record, I think I think it's important. But I would like to. I would that like I, to with Chris seem to go beyond. I, I guess I'm trying to clarify. If we have these restrictions on general public mm -hmm. spaces, aren't you asking? Is I don't want to know what the restrictions are. No, it's not the general public space. No, it's I, not personal. I, I just I makes the collaborate with any of you. It doesn't feel like a very open public space. Okay, so and, and, I, and I'm not the amount of time of day. It doesn't matter what day it is. It it doesn't. It, it reminds me a lot of the park with the sign and the you know the HOA and stuff like that, which didn't feel right. Yeah, like it kind of has a similar. It, like even like he he did a good job of trying to answer like he very clearly had a slide like yeah. you can see it from here well it's blocked by a tree it is blocked like it's I really, kind of closed in I still can get over that because of all the events they all there are people there it ain't really but it doesn't feel super and about and I, they I, would I sign it if I, I could oh. yeah, go ahead oh, sir oh, okay yeah I, if I could chime in because I I think one of the challenges in this discussion for me is um. The fact that we don't have a, a sketch of like what what medium it's going to be, what what it's going to look like, what you know, how visible is there a sound associated with it? Would they put a sign out to let people, you know, certain different things that we've we've talked about with different groups? Um, it's it's so early in the phasing that um, I, I think for me that's the big provisional piece um, is is or maybe contingent piece is having some kind of process to understand what. The, and the art will be. Yeah, and that you raise a really good point, uh, Commissioner uh, Edelman. He because we can just make it provisional upon they get to the point where they have an art piece to show you, you know. and then they come back for approval, and then that's when they get their money. And then that that is further along the way. We're saying yes, but, but you guys still have to approve the artwork that's selected, just like we did with the Joel guys wrap. Um, you know, they went a process and they approved it and that way the project will be way down the road by the time, sure. you know, that happens. Um, and that's one way to, to look to, to handle it if you want to consider that. And I would also, I would also ask that we create some kind of provision for the actual project around the public art being fully funded. Mm -hmm. Because um, I know that that sometimes can change in a public university whether or not there's uh, funding for projects like that. I think mean, you said it was going to be seating. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, create. I mean, that that idea of artistic, of artistic seating as a one mm -hmm. of the, a staple of public art that we haven't done here in Flagstaff. Yeah, so and that of, certainly could yeah. make it a more widely used space yeah. if it is more inviting. Um, my question is about the timeline. Do they need us to provide the funding now? No. When when is the engineer's report supposed to come in? And that's was my question about whether you know phase one can they can they do this in a year? Not that we haven't granted extensions if people are far far enough along. <laughs> um, but like I said, if you made it um, contingent on them receiving. 75% of the funding, or and then um, made it provisional upon you seeing the actual artwork that is chosen through the RFP process. Maybe that, maybe that covers. Oh, so we make it both contingent and provisional? You can do that. One's approved by staff, one's approved by you. But they both have to happen. Right. 
You don't have to do it that way. And I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just trying to make yeah, it clear. We can make it provisional with both those things. Provisional is BPAC season, contingent staff season. Oh, yeah. so yeah. Those two topics could right. If they're coming back, they might as well come back to BPAC and then yes. we approve yes. all of the things. That's, that's true. And, and with the restriction that the funding needs to go entirely to the program mm -hmm. and not to OSP or the foundation or anything like that. If that's what you want. I, I think it will be appropriate. So the provisions on the table are funding timeline, uh, phase one completion. I think we should simplify it if possible. <laughs> Make it provisional upon um, this kind of year. bringing back the actual artwork for your approval and upon no money being used for, I mean, they can't use it for the grant. No one knew it costs. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. That's because by the time they get to the um, actual putting out for the art piece and stuff, they wouldn't be doing that if they don't have the other funding. Right. I'll, I'll move to approve. Um, the um, the grant application under the provision that we get to see the final piece and um, we don't pay for any indirect costs. All in favor? Oh, oh. Everybody want a second? Second. Okay, sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just thinking about it. Yeah. Oh, I think it's always good to disagree. Yeah, it's all right. I just it carries. The motion carries. <laughs> and so Terry, you, you can have say. No, panel Chris. <laughs> um, Chris would have said no. <laughs> okay, so um, now we have uh, for the dark sky, and we have um, Aspen LLC. So this is why I want to group these together. I just I want to ask you guys a question. So dark sky, can we get the picture of yeah, could you ever get those pictures? Uh, the one that I sent to you? Uh, yeah, let me look. Yeah, please. So we remember what we saw when we were first discussing dark sky, and they had that big purple dark sky brewing across the back of the wall. Yeah. And one of our questions was about um branding and whether or not what we were doing was just paying for really, really nice signage. Um and this kind of it brings up a few different things. One, I do want to point out that they, just like um, the dispensary, have pre-existing dark sky brewing signage up there now. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's really almost a, an identical issue. She's willing to drop the giant purple incorporated dark sky brewing. That was going to be painted, right? Yes. Yes. And, and she's been very responsive to our request, as has the dispensary. We gave them some very specific requests about that signage, and they were very clear in their response to our request. They made the lumberjack a human instead of a skeleton. They removed the skeleton in the tree, and they made the snowboarder um, not a skeleton. Um, and here at Dark Sky, they very carefully remove the other branding that they were proposing, and they don't need the branding on the barrels. They do have a great sign up there, which I imagine could potentially remain. I don't know if we don't have that big purple Dark Sky brewing across the back. That would be, as a business owner, I, it would be an interesting decision what you would make there. They don't include it obviously in their rendition. And no, but they don't work where the sign currently is. Yes. Yes. So not talking about the other question, which for me is that this mural's already been completed. Yeah. It looks more than twenty-five percent done to me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. Um how how do we feel? as a group about art that goes around signs because realistically 
this is the same issue on both the dispensary and on Dark Sky. They're different sides, but it's a very similar issue. Right, and I will say that we did ask about whether it's legal signage. Mm -hmm. And we got a ruling that it's not legal signage. But I think it's still within um, BPAC's discretion, whether it's too close. Yeah, I think Dave brought up a good point that, especially talking about the um, the dispensary one, the imagery that I had when we were having the discussions with the signage people was just that banner design. It did not include the little Ponderosa cutout. So signage actually hasn't seen the mural in situ with that. So that is new signage. Sign. Well, yeah. it's not new. It's still in the building, but the design they sent wasn't a mock-up with the, you know, so basically, when, when we went and talked to planning, who makes the determination, they saw a rendering of the mural, and determined that. But as you guys saw, with the sign there, it creates a slightly different feel. And so yeah. planning's never actually seen the full okay. rendering. Right. Okay. They saw the mural. So there is a chance they would think like that that will require additional review okay. because, because they like to see it in its setting. So, so I that, just went through that out. That's, that's true. true. You're right. For the two projects. Yeah. So just I just think that as a group, we have to think about what how we feel about that. Does anybody want to talk about that specific point? Yeah. I love the black I guess sign. Yeah, it has to be signed. Oh, I was curious, um, because I know one of our past projects was the Chocolita mural, which is directly adjacent to their entryway and signage uh -huh. um so i think for me um maybe it's too linear but just trying to understand like i guess if it just being on the same wall with it whereas our previous one was on, on the on an l directly adjacent to the signage and you know i, I don't know I, I in a way i, I hesitate to be too restrictive because i like supporting yeah. our local businesses and and i think that's kind of um, it's I, I yeah, I appreciate yeah, the science component for sure, and I, I'm glad they took it, the uh, the actual is, lettering out of the mural. But yeah, it is kind of a it is a I mean, because obviously we have a lot of murals, like the side of the Orpheum, the, yeah, the Sound of Flight is on the Orpheum building. Certainly, I mean that's certainly something that we are promoting to have a mural on the building, but there's no Orpheum signage on that mural. So, or even, but I understand it. it is, they're very close juxtaposition. Um, the top, this right? one, the sign is in the middle of where the mural would be. Yeah, so I think that's, 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 that's a, material. I think that's my point is that the signage interrupts the art piece. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I, I can appreciate that, that businesses need signs, no problem, but but it interrupts the art piece for the Flagstaff mural and for this particular mural. In addition, this one, again, it looks like it's way yeah. more than 25%. Well, we it's going to be there. This one, I don't know if we think it's going to be there. Because I they, want clarification. They did, because this doesn't you show. Know, yeah, it's, I forgot that sign was there, and I think that. So I'm sorry, uh, I, Claire. Yeah. I don't know how to show I it to you. Want to talk about Thursday first now? Let's talk about something because I well, because the, yes. there's the there's the one, and I just I just wanted to have that conversation about signage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so can do the owl's not working. So the owl's not working. So, no, no, me too. That's all that's showing. So then let's talk about let's talk about we dark skies contingent upon them removing the sign. I don't know if I feel like I have to do that. I mean, but yes, we could. Absolutely. That's what I don't like about it. it, it, it yeah. would I would vote no with the sign today. So that, and maybe the language that you guys just expressed that no signage can interrupt the artwork. Yeah, right. You can redesign it. Right. And, and, and you know, or assure us that it, it won't interrupt the artwork. Part of what we're doing here, and this is part of why I wanted to have this discussion, is I think that these things will continue to come up. So establishing a little bit of a precedent and an understanding so that, like, as Claire pointed out, Chocolita is different 
and it's because the signage is adjacent to it, but it doesn't interrupt the artwork. Yeah, it's, it's not even wall. on the same wall. Yeah, yeah it's adjacent, but it's a different yeah, it's a different wall. wall. Yeah. And if you're at the so there's no confusion about yeah. being one and the same either. Yeah, right? like yeah. not So so just speaking about dark sky, this is a, again an artist and a business owner that have come to us multiple times. They're doing something pretty nice in downtown when you go and you look at this i spent some i took time to go look at this one because i i had i had questions yeah and i wanted to know really what it was and i was actually really surprised at how much of it had been completed i was expecting to take a picture of an empty wall when i went down there um so what if somebody shows up next week with a fully completed this one next round like how do we feel about that yeah, then that, yeah. I mean, I think the intention of the program was always to help make art happen, okay, not reimburse art that did. So that's my question for you, yeah. Dave, because I, I also like to encourage business owners to put art up. Right. And, then, you know, I heard her answer, which was they wanted to get a little bit done when the weather was still good. Right. Um, which is logical. But you know. it's logical, but yes. But is there, you know, does the funding that we would do promote cover the rest of it plus the barrels? The barrels. And or or do you want to reduce the amount? Um and just because the they've already paid I'm, for a part of it. What do you guys think is I'm inclined to only pay for the barrels? I, if, if we have guidelines saying that we that's the budget should, break break those down. She didn't send a presentation or a budget. Oh, that's what I'm sorry. I, I, her original application is one page. It's one page. Uh, uh, okay, so there is a is a breakdown. Uh, artist fee three thousand, materials four thousand five hundred, and then she breaks that into paint, brushes, rags, buckets, metal paint trays, cleaning supplies, drop cloths, scaffolding, and ladder. Maybe we should just ask her for a budget for the remaining plus the barrels. Or just the barrels, depending on what you guys want. But yeah. So break broken down between the mural and the barrels. Yeah. Here's the budget from her um perfect application. Everyone see that okay? Yeah. That blurs in my eyes. It's blurry. It's blurry. I had my eyes. I mean I'm just I'm disinclined. Ask the readers. <laughs> I'm I'm disinclined to disqualify somebody on a technicality like that. Like she's she's a good partner and she's what consistent. The, the whether or not things are complete uh -oh. prior, but I, I feel like it's a precedent that we would need to make sure that we clarified. Well, we're talking about two different things: the yeah. completion and then the sign, right? But, yes, no. two different two different conversations. Um, one, you can make it, you know, contingent that there is no signage that interrupts the artwork. I think on the wall. <laughs> what if they paint around it? Because they're flowers and vines. What if they paint around it? And make it make it a part of the right. Sign. I mean, yeah, yeah. I don't think we're that's Still like, that's not part the of the proposal. Still it's, 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 yeah. contingent in it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think I think I like the idea of making it contingent on the idea that there is no business signage that interrupts the artwork. And I, I I'll leave the already completed part alone just to keep things simplified but going forward i think maybe that's a conversation staff could have with somebody is that if if this stuff has already been started we're disinclined to approve it yeah. well, the people we would probably, probably, probably have that conversation would be coming back to you with guideline changes right to just strengthen it, 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 it it's in there that we can't fund it is already in there well, that was why i asked why that uh, completed here. that I we could. can't come we can't fund something that's already been completed. It's already in there. Right. But um, it also says discouraged. We can make that very clear if that was the question. Right. This is not completed though, right? Because she she yeah, clearly wanted to add more. I, I don't like the phrasing of the it, it interrupts the because again, somebody can come back and say, Well, we've painted around it and so it doesn't interrupt the art piece. I think we should say approve it under the condition that they remove the sign on that wall is what I think is the most clear. Yeah. Because this 
they can pin around it. The Flagstaff sign, the, the signage doesn't interrupt the art piece either. It's painted around. There's a block cut out. And so I think if we use the language that says, as long as it doesn't interrupt, then the artist can say, well, the signage doesn't interrupt because we've painted around it, right? But if we say it shouldn't, art, public art funded by us shouldn't go on a wall that has the business sign. And then they can figure out moving a sign or another wall to paint using city funds is what I think. But if we use that phraseology, you can't interrupt, we'll say, screw it, we'll just paint around it. You know what I mean? But then, but, we, I, then we would I still. Say, I would say that interrupt. Yeah. I would bring it to you guys. Yeah. I mean, you know, steps perfectly capable of making that judgment. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's unclear to the artist. Yeah. yeah. Somebody, somebody submitting a grant is going to say it can't interrupt, and they'll say, okay, we'll just paint around it. And then we have to have the discussion. We have to go, you know, yeah. So if we if we in the guidelines say you can't have signage on the same side as public art, then that's clear from the get go. And an artist is not going to try. What if the city of Flagstaff decides to put in a sign for the city that is public art that says city of Flagstaff? Like what if it's a beautiful kinetic art sign that is also the city of Flagstaff. Well, that's not tech. Public is not tech. It's not a big sign. I just want to, just, put it on, just put it, occurred to me, I want to make sure we're not limiting ourselves. Yeah. But if, if the mural didn't touch it, right? So say yeah. say the mural stayed 10 feet below, but was still in the same wall, would you would it be okay to have the sign there? I mean, that would be another one of those little questions. I, I think if it's not, a, like, I think if it's not, it doesn't, doesn't need that. that doesn't it. It. Yeah, you could, you know, as long as it's not interrupting. I think the interrupting is kind of good. What they have Versus now, I would have been fine funding that. Yeah, I would have too. Yeah, but I, I, Which I is interesting. What about you, Matt? You're making a, a concerned face. I, I mean, I'm <laughs> not based on the the sign right there. Okay. Like the art going around the sign doesn't change the fact that the sign's still adjacent, immediately adjacent to what we would have funded. But we funded the front of the building, and they have a sign there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it doesn't interrupt the art. Yeah. See that this doesn't interrupt the art. Yeah. I think it's a I think it's if we try to define it too specifically, we're gonna paint ourselves literally in the corners. <laughs> um so then let's make a motion. Let's just make a motion that it has to be as appears without the sign. And okay. then we don't have yeah, to define we're, it. Yeah, we can like, have this conversation. Yeah, we can each and every we time. can talk about tweaking the guidelines. Um, but I, maybe we need to vote on okay. these as, yeah. as yeah. they were presented. I'll make a motion to approve it with the art as it appears in the submittal without the sign. I'll second. And I, I don't need to review it again if that's what it looks like. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So then our last one, we've got the Flagstaff sign in Milton. Um, I do. I do want to think about one thing with that one, which is that, boy, howdy, do we need some colorful art on milk? Yes. <laughs> so with that context, um, we have the same sign problem. We want to bring that one yeah. up. Yeah. Yes. Well, right. but a bigger yeah. problem, because while the marijuana is legal in Arizona, it is federally illegal. And for us to be putting public funds towards something that could be seen as endorsing something that's federally illegal makes me uncomfortable. I would leave that to it's, city's legal. It's legal in the city and the state, so I, I don't have an issue with what what it is. I think I think the bigger concern for me is that we did not see this sign in the original mock-up. Right. right. Yeah. And right. I would make it contingent for approval upon it appearing as it did in the mock-up without the sign. And, and if they're not willing to do that, then maybe resubmit with art that doesn't intersect with the sign. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate all the changes that they made based on our initial round of comments. I really like it. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, yeah. Really it's great, fantastic. But it's I would just not a good world. wall. And I understand yeah. they don't have another better wall, but it's just um, not a good spot for it. It's it's actually a little heartbreaking for me because actually I I do think it's a good spot for it. Yes. But. But it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, wall, that's yeah. specific one. So, so it's, it's, con con it's contingent it. upon us having it reviewed by signage, but is it also contingent upon it not incorporating Ponderosa? 
dispensary within the white frame? Right. Well, to her point about it, about um, mock-ups being mm -hmm. um, no, do you want them to final to be true to mm -hmm. the submission, I think that's a good way to work around the signage thing. Is just say, well, it doesn't match what you originally submitted. It incorporates a new element, which is a pretty, I mean, that is a third of the width of the sign. Right. You know, also, right. I mean, just in terms of the percentage of, of space, that little dark sky emblem up on the wall is, is pretty tiny. And we're saying that we don't want that. This is, this is a significant aesthetic impediment. Yeah. yeah. And it's not going away. If you paint it, if you paint it white, then it's going to be in the clouds. It'll be more, more part of the yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that response confuses me. So what is your motion? What do you guys think? Anybody else, Claire? Yeah, I I it's I wish it had been part of it because they did the work to modify it based on our feedback. So I wish we could have had that discussion with them. Um, I do too. Yeah, because I, uh, I, I think they're, to me, it's on, yeah. you know, if, if the the mural stopped, like the edge of the mural stopped before the dispensary, it would even be different than it going fully underneath and around, so. Yeah, or um, if it was yeah. lower than the dispensary mm -hmm. sign, and it just, like it, it went all the way across, but didn't intersect with it. Yeah. That, that's what my question was to him, was, was can we the provisional? Would you want a provisional, let them uh, modify it? Back and I would do that. Modify it? Yeah. So I have a question though, with with uh, with the dark sky, if, if this is on the same wall with the dispensary sign, then where does that leave us with dark sky where we just said, you need to remove the dark sky signage? Because it's on the same wall as the yard, right? And that was kind of why I was willing to say, let's approve it provisional to it not having the sign. Yeah, but I think they said they can't move no. signs. I, I mean, we're right. killing it by. So then we should just say no. If, right. if he already, they already said we can't do this, there's no sense in us saying, we'll prove it if you do this thing you say right. you can't do. Right. Yeah. I mean, we do have to ask sign people, but we would have to have the resubmission to show them. Um, you know, because I think what so I mean, we did not show this image to um, we, we when we went to the signage people, we only had the welcome to Flagstaff and had full clouds, and we were just asking if the welcome to Flagstaff was a sign. Yeah. Can we not? And they said no, that, no, that's not a problem, but we have we didn't present it in any kind of juxtaposition with the Ponderverse and dispensary. So, I mean, but that's a question we can ask and have answered by December. But I would need, if they want to resubmit a, an altered design that, you know, doesn't make Ponderosa dispensary part of the image. Um, so like, but you were just saying, right, you know, about dark sky with, with the, the same sign, sign that's right. still there. But there's no guidelines against that. It, it would be something for you guys to see and 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 decide upon. But our, our commentary on the wall was that they had yes. to move it because it interrupted the art. Yes. So yeah. this interrupts the art. If they were to submit some art that was on part of this wall and it didn't interrupt the art. Well, then we would make a judgment. We would, would make a judgment of whether or not yeah. it interferes. Yeah, well, I, I agree guess. with that. The placement of the two signs is different, too. The dark sky one is really different. Or is this one is on the edge of the wall. I I would almost say I'd like to table this one and see what signage says. Yeah. Because if they kill it, you know, we can't take it to them on Zoom unless they only submit an image. Okay. So okay. I see. Well I don't want to support this. Okay. But that's just me. I'm not guys somebody, somebody needs to make somebody. a motion. Yeah. Well <laughs> I I will no on this proposal because of the signage on the same wall as the art mural. Make a motion to not approve. I move to not approve. I second. All in favor of not approving. Aye. 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 I'm really torn. Come on, Claire. I I think I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna say aye as well. 
I think it's I think it's too much signage and yeah. not enough. Yeah. All right, the motion carries. Your request for come back. Yes. All right, let's move on. Um, so does anybody have any requests for future agenda items? You did. I do. I know, but I'm being polite and like, I'm getting this. <laughs> um, I would like to request if we could get a second, um, or two, I guess two. I would like to request that we put um a thorough discussion of Eliza's project on the agenda and really try to understand it and come to some conclusions as to how that drives our conversations in UPAC. I'll support yeah. that. Second or support, whatever Great. we're supposed to do for that. Thank you. We, have the ball, we just have to support it. I can't promise it'll be this summer. It doesn't have to. No, that's okay. No, that's yeah. fine. I'll we'll um, get it to you as soon as possible. And I mean, I think like having some good framing questions and some other things so that we have a really good discussion with me. And then with that, item J, time and date for upcoming meetings, BFAC, December 9, 2024, 4 p.m. We will see you all there. And then item K, we are adjourned. Yes, thank you all. Thank you. Yes, let me know. Well, I, we usually don't do this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have, but not. Not.